I'm with uh, Chris McKee, who's the Director of Public Relations and Industry Compliance for WatchGuard. And he's going to discuss with us today about whether firewall technology is a dying technology. Um, Chris. Well, thanks, Ben. Thanks for uh, having me here. Um, yeah, that's actually a very good question. And certainly here at the show, we've seen a lot of people claim the firewall's dead or it needs to be fixed. Um, our perspective is more of the firewall of the old is really it's evolving or it's evolved into to really much more um, of a, a unified device capable of addressing multiple threats rather than just being a, a basic firewall. So I guess you could say, yeah, the firewall has died, but it certainly has risen again as, as a unified threat management appliance handling web filtering, gateway antivirus, IPS, IDS, as well as additional networking features like VPN, SSL. Um, so it's a much more multi-purpose appliance than just the firewall of the past. Uh -huh. I, th I think the issue people have is not with all the extra abilities that it provides, but the fact that they're, they're spending so much time managing and changing the rules, especially with the proliferation of bogus sites and, and having to block these sites so the users don't actually get hit right. by a phishing attack. Right. Well, and, and I think that's the point, is, is there's multiple vectors of where attacks come from. So whether it's a, a site that's got a cross-site scripting or drive-by downloads, the, the idea is the firewall now acts as that guardian against these multiple types of threats and therefore needs to have that multi-purpose capability behind it, hence why we call it unified threat management. Um, with that, we're able to give both businesses and their users better protection against, just as you're saying, go to these sites or, or the multitude of sites out there, as well as more of the Web 2.0 vulnerabilities that we're starting to see. Things that, um, whether it's a, a Facebook issue or SharePoint, a lot of the abilities you can control with your, your appliance, your UTM appliance, eliminates that risk of your your employees going to Facebook when they shouldn't be, or let's say gives them the ability to do IM and peer-to-peer, -peer, but blocks maybe attachments, or so executables can't come through. Um, there's a lot of capabilities in the box now that give IT administrators more management, more control, and with that then comes greater security. Okay, I, and, I, and I think certainly the listeners would appreciate a lot of the, that extra functionality. Uh, especially, you know, the, the ability to detect attachments going out via IM. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's a mm -hmm. big area where, where, where they face data leakage. Um, just focusing on the list technology, the blacklisting, because right. I, I notice you keep running away from that. How can we reduce the amount of blacklisting we do? Well, it's, it's, I think it's a good question, and I don't think the answer is it's either a whitelist or blacklist. Mm. One of our WatchGuard's uh, premise when it comes to security is to deny all and allow only that is, which is good, right? Other firewall vendors may take a different approach and allow everything and then try to do packet inspections on it all to make sure what comes through is, is fine or, or valid. DPI, you mean. Exactly. Yeah. And the risk there is by allowing all, you inherently open yourself up to greater opportunities of, of threats through these websites, whereas our approach is, again, to deny all and only allow the good sites that you want to have in. So it's, it's a little different from a blacklist, and I think we're really what we're moving towards is more of a gray list, right? There are going to be certain sites that you may, and this is why I use the Facebook example, you may want your employees to have access to Facebook, but maybe, maybe not the IM capabilities there. And we're going to see more granular control at the application level um, to restrict either certain sites or restrict certain applications that, that work with those sites. The bottom line is the technology is getting smarter at identifying if a site has, let's say, it's a drive-by download scenario or it's cross-site scripting, that the technology is inherently going to be able to recognize that, block those packets before they come through. But to deny everybody, you know, the entire universe of the Internet, I, I think it's, it's a bit of a, a stretch. Yes, uh, I, I, I think it is. But even to allow 300 sites, uh, you know, certainly in, in many people's uh, jobs, they do a lot of research. Right. And when they, they go to their search engine and they get 50 sites uh, and they can't connect to any because they're not in the white list, mm -hmm. that, that mm -hmm. is also uh, equally an issue to them. Oh, absolutely, right? I mean, the last thing we want to do is stifle productivity, mm. um, which is, again, coming back to the management side of, of unified threat management is is giving that administrator that ability to control and customize, right? Uh, much like antivirus. 
when you first set up any sort of anti-spam or antivirus, usually anti-spam is even a better example. When you set up anti-spam, you're going to get some level of, of emails coming through, but over time you can uh, adjust the algorithms, you can more or less you know, play with the, the dials to mitigate and minimize the number of, of either false positives or spam that shouldn't be coming through. Same thing with web filtering. Web filtering technology has that same level of customization. So at first, uh, as you're saying, your employees may want to go to these sites because they need to and they may be blocked. Um, administrators will have that ability to control and manage, okay, I need to open up more areas. So, so, so what I'm hearing from you is that actually, you know, from, from your perspective, there, there'll still be blacklists and whitelists, but also to, in, in the gray list sense, you've got a, a web filter which allows people to carry on working and being productive without my firewall administrators having to add additional websites into the black and white list. Right. Is, is, is that correct? That's absolutely right. Uh, okay, it's that's that, pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, um, Chris, thank you very much for your time. Well, thanks, Ben. It's my pleasure to be here. Hello, everyone. My name is Ben Chai. I'm the editor for securityvibes.com. If you've enjoyed this video or have any other comments to make, please do fill in the comment boxes and let us know what you think. Thank you.